So now we're going to change gears and talk about HER2 positive breast cancer. And I think that um, there was some interesting abstract at San Antonio, um, both in the early and late stage uh, of HER2 positive disease. And I think the first one is, you know, neoadjuvant therapy for HER2 positive breast cancer, I think, has been a tremendous success. I think what we're trying to do now is refine it. And I think there was some data uh, that were presented on the optimal chemotherapy backbone for the uh, use of trastuzumab, bortuzumab. Uh, Francisco, do you know anything about that trial? Well, uh, this, uh, there was a retrospective uh, study from MD Anderson uh, looking at different uh, combinations with uh, THP, with taxane, herceptin, pertuzumab, compared to uh, the same plus carboplatin, so TCHP, or THP followed by an anthracycline. And again, this was a retrospective study, but they had a decent number of patients, more than 200 patients. And uh, the pathologic complete response rate was higher higher in patients treated with THP, which was a little bit interesting because you would think TH, TCHP or THP followed by AC would give you a higher uh, pathologic complete response. So that was reassuring. How those patients were selected though and why is the question because of course you select the patients well and you're a smart doctor, you, then you can get, uh, you know, maybe that's all they need. Uh, but it's something to keep in mind that some patients may need to do very well with THP like they did in the Neosphere trial, which was the FDA registration trial for uh, pertuzumab. And then after surgery, in that trial, all the patients got FEC chemotherapy. But maybe they don't need FEC chemotherapy if they achieve a pathologic complete response. So I thought that was an interesting... Um, and uh, it's interesting because if you look at the data from Affinity and the uh, Neosphere, et cetera, I mean, the diarrhea rate, grade three diarrhea with, uh, when you add carboplatin, and you're using docetaxel is like 18% or something, and you you have it uh, or less by using just uh, pacli weekly paclitaxel, trastuzumab, pertuzumab regimen. You still see diarrhea. That's the thing, and you still see some grade three, but it's just so much better tolerated. So I love the idea of you know the idea is less is more. You know you do some kind of induction, look at response as you're talking about, and then you could actually parse patients based on their tumor characteristics and how they're you know and of course tolerance into different therapies. We had a woman who was in her 70s who's really um, had terrible scoliosis and not good medical care over time. And uh, she just got THP and had a PCR, which was great because then she dropped her ejection fraction. <laughs> so THP with paclitaxel or with docetaxel? With weekly paclitaxel. Weekly paclitaxel. No, I, because I don't give docetaxel to old ladies. Right, fair enough. So, right. Lee, you so I actually have a patient right now that I'm treating who's uh, in her mid-70s who has a T2N1, HER2 positive. And I, I actually like docetaxel and I've gotten comfortable with it, although weekly paclitaxel, certainly for low risk patients, uh, I like too, but it's a little bit easier every three weeks. Obviously the diarrhea is an issue. And I thought I'd give her the first cycle and see if we could add the carbo because she was at high risk and she couldn't. When we've gotten it through, I saw her this week and we've got cycle three in and we'll do four. And as you say, uh, Francisco, that the results are very good with, with single agent taxane Progetta and Herceptin. So when you give, so just a question, so when you give the THP, so when you give weekly paclitaxel in that regimen, do you do it continuously or do you give them a week break? No. Because a lot of people no. like to want to do it like the metastatic study. No, 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 no. no. Continuously. Well, continuously. We do it continuously. We, uh, yeah. At NYU, we generally give weekly taxol, trastuzumab, and pertuzumab for 12 weeks, and then those stands AC before surgery. But it's true that some patients may not need. It's hard and to tell. And now we're so. just starting to explore that. I mean, it's really been a relatively recent change. We do the That's same, what we do. but do now we always give the paclitaxel first. Right. Um, and then we give the pertuzumab, you know, four doses, and then you give dose dense AC, right? But now if somebody has a, you know, PCR essentially by exam and imaging after their THP, right. it's like, it's hard to give them AC. Why give the dose dense and AC? And especially for older patients or, Patients, you, you know, yeah, well, that's the big issue. Should so. we be giving AC? Uh, I'm still an anthracycline adherent in general, but I think if you, if you look at um, BCR G06, the, there's a 2% numerical benefit. It wasn't compared. It wasn't, so it's, it's hard to say a uh, non-anthracycline regimen is better, um, and, but it, they're probably comparable. The thing that I worry about actually is tumor heterogeneity and whether we should be giving AC for those patient populations that have variable HER2 in their tumor, particularly larger tumors where there's more That's likelihood. That's, I think, a, different, a yeah. different case. Like triple negative, I'm big anthracycline well, yeah. fan. But no, for so. HER2 positive in Neosphere, you're ER negative, HER2 positive, 
And I think the other one was trifenema, your ER negative or two positive, you get either THP or TCHP. Right. You have a PCR rate, I think, of 70 to 80 percent or something. Without an anthracycline. Remember, they got all the anthracycline afterwards. Well, that was in the Trifina study, but that was not, uh, the primary endpoint was not the PCR, it was, it was a cardiac uh, Trifina was study. small. It was a very yeah. small it's study. Neosphere so 70, 70 patients. Yeah, no, 70 uh, patients in each arm. Uh, and the problem with Neosphere is that they got THP, then surgery, and then FEC, so we don't know what would be the PCR. So, in a way, we have to extrapolate a little bit. But uh, I don't like Daxotir and Carbo in, in general it's very, because of the toxicity. So the weekly Taxol, Trastuzumab, Pertuzumab, and AC we find is relatively yeah. easy. It it is, is, I agree. Yeah. I think I agree with Lee. I'm still an anthracycline adherent. Um, and I think the follow-up analyses with the event-free survival from the Neosphere data, despite getting the THP surgery and the FEC, still did not meet the EFS you know, endpoint at the follow-up time point. But they were so numerically I, superior. They were, and I'm not saying that we should not de-escalate. I do believe, I definitely think right. that there is room for de-escalation, and that's where we should be focusing our biomarker work on. But uh, as it stands now, I do I think that I'm adherent to the anthracyclines. The problem with the docetaxel, just a last point about that, is not only is the diarrhea, I think I, as we've seen, uh, you know, in the metastatic setting as well, febrile neutropenia is also a definitely well, most people risk. get, most people, at least in my practice, yeah, get we, THP. We, we, we THP, give growth factor everybody. We give growth factor yeah. everybody. Yeah. So, CCHP. But, but the thing is that, so what you're saying is that if someone has a PCR, they need more therapy, they still give them anthracycline? Why? But do yeah, they need anything? I, I do they need have, anything? That's I, my they, point. Do they, they need, need more? more. I, we, 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 I have continued to give all therapy up front, so I haven't really changed yeah, my practice front, yet. So but I think that to, now to break the, it down, the studies now a, are looking at a parsing out, a triage. We have to make a change. We don't want to do everything for everybody and just right. add more. Right. So what we could do is say, okay, we're going to start with something, and then we're going to triage based on your response. So the really right. good responders, okay, we're done. Correct. The patients who have an intermediate response, then we're going to do this. The patients who have no response, Correct. we're going to look for you know, alternative therapies and try and overcome resistance. And I actually think that's an incredibly important step for us Great. to take now. PCR is such a good biomarker yeah. in, in HER2 positive disease that why not use it to, Correct. Make, to either escalate or de-escalate? So let's, let's kind of, speaking of de-escalation, I mean, before we go to that, because we're going to go to the adjuvant setting in a minute, is there any role for TKIs, HER2 TKIs at this point in time for neoadjuvant therapy, either neratinib or lapatinib at this point in time as neoadjuvant therapy, not adjuvant, but neoadjuvant? I don't think so right now. I would agree. So no one would use it off trial? No. no. Okay. I mean, we agree. I mean, there's not a lot of data. There's a lot of data showing a slightly increased PCR rate, but no survival benefit. I think we're all in agreement.